Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, another episode here. I'm talking to you from the Michigan Center for Regenerative Medicine, and I'm getting stem cell treatment in my knees. And the doctor is going to come by eventually. This is my brother, Andrew. You guys know me. Come on. <laughs> We're going to take you through um, all of the processes involved in having stem cells injected into my knees. Uh, actually, they're going to rebuild my meniscus and uh, hopefully uh, I'll be able to show you the whole process. You're gonna talk to the doctor in a little bit. He's gonna tell you about the process. Andrew's gonna be my second cameraman and he's gonna hopefully show like a bunch of needles penetrating my flesh, which will, which will be exciting. Ideally. So uh, we're gonna do that. I just wanna give you a quick uh, start up here and we'll meet Dr. Santa Anna when he comes in and uh, he'll explain to us the process of doing that. Now I've had bad knees for how long now? Long as I've known you. Long as he's known me, which is a long time. And so, um, years. theoretically, this should be able to take my knees back to their good times, which I can't even remember. It's been such a it's long relative. time. They might be better than ever. They might be better than they have ever been. So, uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to take it step by step. And uh, not only am I going to show you the process now of getting the, the treatment, but we'll follow up in months and months ahead, and you'll be able to see what happens when the stem cells... Uh, do their stuff and uh, what kind of improvements you might be able to expect if you're getting a similar a similar pr uh, procedure. Okay. Right. That's okay, guys. This is my doctor. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Dr. John Santa Anna. I've been trained in physical medicine and rehabilitation. I'm a pain physician. I uh, finished my training in 20, uh, 2010. I mm -hmm. uh, started doing stem cells and regenerative medicine around 2015. Uh, we started opening up the Michigan Center for Regenerative Medicine around the, end of two, around the end of 2018, beginning of 2019, to really just bring this technology and just this type of medicine to the population here in Michigan. When I first uh, was learning about stem cells, it was like 2015 when I had my knee kind of uh, problematic. What kind of progress has this, this made over that yeah, a, time. a lot. So in 2015, the field is still pretty much in its infancy. So we are learning more and more about how the body repairs, what we use for repairing, how the body heals and how tissues heal too. We're learning more about who makes a good candidate, who makes a poor candidate for these treatments, uh, how PRP works, how stem cells work, and even just the basics of it is how osteoarthritis causes pain and, and uh, dysfunction, mm. you know? So it's changing a lot of the things that we initially learned from medicine. Just to give an example, for the longest time in medical school, the treatment for something like arthritis would be an anti-inflammatory. So something like a, like a Motrin or ibuprofen or an naproxen or something like that. And then you have your steroid injections. For the longest time, that's standard of care. If you get knee pain, you just get a shot of steroids and you're good yeah. to go. Now that paradigm has shifted. So instead of putting an anti-inflammatory like a steroid or a medication that actually stops the inflammatory process with regenerative medicine with PRP and stem cells the idea is we want to induce that inflammation encourage inflammation so it's a complete flip-flop of what we've been learning this whole time um, so with regenerative medicine the the there's still a role for steroids and anti-inflammatories mm -hmm. but mostly as a temporary kind of stoppage for pain so that you can kind of do what you need to do but as far as the healing process and long-term outcomes, I think regenerative medicine and stem cells is where it's going to be. So as far as progress with this, we're learning more about the paradigm of how arthritis and degeneration and joints and function all work and what's the chemistry involved in that. It's not just as simple as how thick your cartilage is. That's only one piece of it. It's all about what's in that chemical soup in your knee and how it interacts with all those receptors that's causing all this dysfunction. And what we've learned with stem cells and PRP is that it actually balances out this chemical soup in there that stops the progression of arthritis. Um, so it's not just a matter of rebuilding tissue, it's actually, you know, the homeostasis in your knee is what it's actually addressing. Now, um, I, my brother was looking at a pamphlet outside and it was saying, I'm here for my meniscus. What are the most popular uh, and most beneficial ways to use stem cells uh, into the regenerative process? So essentially it's any, for, for our office here, we focus primarily on orthopedic injuries. So there's other applications for that too that I'm not gonna speak of, but as far as orthopedic issues, we deal with any issues of the joints and the spine. So um, I would say if you take a sample size of all the patients that we've treated here, 
our number one indication of our patients come in for is for knee pain. Mm. And that could be from meniscus issues. It could be from arthritis. It could be from tendon issues, things like that. Um, but so far, the top one will be osteoarthritis, degeneration in the knee, and, uh, and meniscus tears. The, the second body part that we treat here is actually spines. We see a lot of back pain issues. And we, we know what the paradigm is with the algorithm of medicine traditionally would be you know physical therapy rest mm -hmm. you take your anti-inflammatories <laughs> if that fails you get referred to get a steroid injection if not you get like an ablation or something like that if that fails your next step would be you know lifelong physical therapy yeah or just deal with it mm -hmm. or you get a fusion or a back surgery when patients come in here in our office with back pain, we give them the option of regenerative medicine too. So instead of just, again, stopping the pain with a steroid or something that's temporary or making a big uh, mechanical change in your spine with a surgery, let's try and repair what's what's going on in your spine. So the biggest advantage of, of regenerative medicine over, over surgery is that with a surgery, it's irreversible, right. right? Once you get a laminectomy, you take out that lamina, mm -hmm. which is the roof of the spine, you take that off, there's no growing that back. That's mm -hmm. gone. If you put a screw in there and a bar mm -hmm. and a cage, it's there. That, that thing is there forever, and there's no turning back from that. With regenerative medicine is that we're, we're returning the normal biomechanics in your mm -hmm. spine because we're repairing things that, that are broken. And if for whatever reason, it's... It, doesn't work or it doesn't give you that sustained relief that you're looking for then you can still get the surgery that you need to then least, that's also least invasive to most invasive. exactly and that's you knowing that hey i threw the kitchen sink in my back and <laughs> nothing else has worked so this is the best option versus now a lot of patients end up getting surgeries because that's the only option that they heard of right right so it's so I like the fact that you're here trying to spread the word that we're trying to spread out and, and re reaching your audience about it. So uh, in 2016, when my knee was totally a mess and the doctor recommended orthoscopic surgery, it was a smart thing not to do that at the time. Yeah, I mean, it's a, there's, there's a time and place for everything. You yeah. know, I think like 2015, we're still kind of just scratching the surface of what regenerative medicine can do. At, I would say at that time, there's probably the best available data they have. Mm -hmm. um, but again, knowing by what your experience is, you ended up not getting this the scope, yeah. and you still I was fine. functional yeah, until yeah. until the solution here. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, one more thing before we get into the actual procedure. So, for those of you that don't know, and, and I did a video yesterday about coming here. So, okay. there, my my yeah. audience, okay. it's one of my more popular videos. People are really interested in it, nice. actually. Mm -hmm. And some people didn't understand what a stem cell was. So, like the very basics, it's an unprogrammed stell that can become anything and then maybe tell us what is the difference between a, a fetus style you know which everybody obviously it's a big controversial thing yeah. versus your own and what is yeah. the difference between the two okay so when we talk about stem cells we're actually referring to mesenchymal stem cells or i guess like the more appropriate term nowadays again this evolution of how we're learning regenerative medicine is mesenchymal signaling cells mm. so it's essentially these are the msc's are the cells that, that are in, they can convert to any tissue um, that's needed the the difference between umbilical cord cells or you know the placental derived cells versus you know bone marrow derived stem cells that we're getting from you or adipose tissue derived stem cells that we, that we get from the person is that we know we know that with bone marrow stem cells and adipose stem cells that we obtain from the patient, we know that those cells are going to be alive and viable. Mm -hmm. So those are the two most important terms. They have to be viable and are able to do the job. The problem with placental cells and, and fetal cells and umbilical cord cells is that these cells, they may be numerous in volume, mm -hmm. but the process of obtaining these umbilical cells and processing them and freezing them, put them in the freezer and thawing them out, it, it, they essentially die. If you do get, let's say, 1% viable cells, they're probably in their deathbed and dying anyway. So it's you're just essentially injecting dead cell proteins mm -hmm. into that area. Wow. And I think that's where the data with stem cells is so conflicting because there isn't there hasn't been any standard as far as no differentiation correct they haven't different they always just say this is stem cell a this is stem cell b we inject it here this is the outcomes so until they they've 
that's why we have to look at these studies really with a closer eye when you look at how the outcomes of our stem cells are. You have to make sure that where are these stem cells coming from? Do they count how many stem cells they are? And are they viable cells? So it's not just a matter of, hey, this is a stem cell, this is gonna work for your knee. No, it has to be done correctly. And and so one of the reasons that this is the, the biggest, one of the biggest advantages and advances that we have in regenerative medicine is, is, is being able to process the cells and being able to count the cells. Kind of similar to how a physician would go to you like me and I'll give you a medication. You want to know exactly how many milligrams of medication I'm giving you. Yeah. Not just like, ah, I think it's kind of this ballpark number. I think it's good to go. Here you go. <laughs> Nowadays, we're, we're trying to, yeah, exactly. Standard we're trying dosage. to standardize everything now that we know that you need this many viable cells mm -hmm. to be able to get this outcome. We have a big pool of patients and researchers can look at this data and mm -hmm. really see what the outcomes are because anecdotally from what we're seeing is that the results are phenomenal. I mean, it's just a lot better than you know what we expected. And that's the end goal of this, is to be able to standardize so we can offer it to everyone. Uh, my knees are not, like you told me yesterday, they're not like, they're not broken down like I'm not in a, in a horrible state. So what, what this therapy is gonna do for me is it's just gonna basically fill in all of those it's going to regenerate a lot of that uh, degradation that happened in my meniscus. What kind of things should I be able to expect? Well, we know for a fact it's going to stop any uh, degeneration and degradation that's going on in your knees. So yeah. It's going to stop the arthritic process, which is you know huge in itself. Um, the other things that it would do too is like any defects that you have in you know in the tissue, in the cartilage, in your joints. It's going to fill in those those gaps and defects, and and again uh, smooth it out, and hopefully it's going to maintain that. That, that joint movement and biomechanics that you have in your knee. The, the whole goal of this is that to keep you doing what you're doing and, right. and traveling and exploring all that stuff for years and years and years to come. Okay, so now we're gonna do this procedure. Can you explain roughly what it's gonna be, what they're gonna do, what you're gonna be doing to me and uh, what can I, I can expect in the next few hours, right? Yeah. So first thing that we'll do is, you know, we'll, we'll bring you back into the operating room and what we'll do is we'll, we'll extract some uh, bone marrow from your, your pelvis. So that's the first step. I'll have you lay down on the table. I have the ultrasound machine to kind of uh, get our landmarks and to kind of guide the area that we're going to go for. After that, we'll numb the area really well. And then we'll use a specialized needle to kind of get into the bone, into the bone marrow, get some bone marrow out. After that, we bring you back in here. You just kind of relax for a little bit. I bring the bone marrow sample into our lab, which is run by Real Age Technologies. Uh, they have a, a fully functioning lab with a tech there that's gonna uh, analyze your sample and then make sure that we uh, uh, compact that volume, extract the stem cells that we need to. So, we'll take out, so it takes about 40 minutes to kind of sample the stem cells. After that, we bring you back to the operating room and then we'll inject into your knees. Okay, eight points per knee. So right now I'm kind of looking at maybe six to eight, depending on kind of what I'm seeing. So once I scan out the ultrasound, I'll kind of hit different art parts. So I want to make sure I get all those major ligaments that you have in your knees, um, the quadriceps tendon, the patellar tendon, mm. um, and also inside your, your knee joint. So the meniscus, also the, the mm. uh, condyles, the, fe the femoral condyles, mm. the medial and lateral condyle, where the cartilage layer is. So I'll address all those too. I was curious, you're basically injecting a liquid, mm -hmm. you know, into your knee and then I'm going to articulate the knee, obviously not put too much yeah. craziness on it. How much of the how much of your work is just gonna leak out? And how does that stay there enough to actually get the job done? I was yeah. sort of thinking about that. Yeah. So for the stem cells is a permeable memory. Yeah, yeah. So the good thing is like the knee is a capsule. So yeah. you know once we kinda of inject it, it's gonna stay in there. Okay. Um so it's not gonna leak out or anything like that. If it does, usually if it's if you put way too much, yeah, it's stuff that could leak out. But you know, we're just gonna put a right amount in there. And it's a capsule because it's stay in the capsule. Mm -hmm. The other thing that happens too is that not like a steroid or a lidocaine or like a, even a gel injection, it's not static. So once it's in there, it's gonna start this process of recruiting more cells in there. So the stem cells I'm gonna put in there now, those missing kind of stem cells I'm gonna put in you today, it's not gonna be the same cells that's gonna be there a month from now. They're gonna so differentiate. They're they're gonna differentiate and they're gonna recruit they're, they're more gonna cells. The yeah, so it's gonna it's gonna start, yeah, mm -hmm. correct. It's it's gonna start this signal, it's gonna recruit that's more why cells this in there. Is important. The signal is they're ultimately gonna tell yeah, your but body. Isn't the meniscus non-vascular? How are they gonna get how are they going to recruit 
people to fix it if there's no just like flow. Any other, just like any other inflammatory. Correct. So the, the, you have vascular supply into your meniscus. Uh-huh. It's, a, it's You have your small uh, capillaries that kind of go in there and stuff like that. So it's still going to cause, okay. yeah. Okay. So, so cool, it's still cool, going to cool. get there. Yeah. And uh, just really quick, the you showed me the three humps. Can you exp- So the, the after the injection, what kind of, uh, what am I going to be doing uh, post this and what can I expect for the, uh, for the, um, Recovery. Yeah. So typically we talk about the the process for tissue remodeling or healing is about a hundred days, so about three months roughly. So the first um, hump that you're going to have will be the inflammatory phase. So that usually lasts around you know three to five days, where it's going to recruit a lot of these inflammatory cells in there. It's, so your knee is going to feel pressure. It's going to be sore for the first few days because of the inflammation is going to be really fired up. After that, it's going to be the proliferation phase. So that's when, again, it's going to start, again, recruiting more of these cells in there, some growth factors in there. So that goes on to about um, about three to four weeks. And then the tissue remodeling phase starts at around four weeks, and it goes all the way up to 100 days. Mm. So you're going to be on restrictions for about two about two to three weeks roughly so that means like no exercising no running no jumping no squats walking is okay walking's fine doing your normal chores at home is fine going up and down the stairs is fine so it's just you know you don't want to do anything too extra to kind of increase the right uh, pounding in your knees but at the four week mark we know that the tissue remodeling phase starts you want to challenge your knee a little bit so you can start gradually returning back to your normal activities and you keep gradually improving that all the way up to three months post okay sounds good all right let's get started all right let's okay jayo <laughs> so when we do the inject so if are you going to record the aspiration too yeah sure i don't care whatever you whatever i'm allowed to do so you could do that it's a, it's a little graphic sure so just kind of let you know is there any sound like crunching this microphone will pick it up real nice oh, okay. I'll, I'll wait the for grinding the, uh, with, and he's going to do the, the twisting with the drill or with the hand drill oh it's brutal that's i don't bar- want to have one that's of those. barbaric <laughs> You don't want to have a nurse brother. You don't want to have a nurse, a medical medical uh, professional uh, in your family because he will tell you the facts and you don't want facts. It's awesome. You want fairy tale. Good. Relaxed. Mm-hmm. And you get to pick which music we're playing. No, it's just I know what you're doing and I know what I'm feeling mm-hmm. and it's totally different. The miracle of anesthesia. I'll take that back. Yep. Thank you. There we go. Oh, that beautiful. Cramp, that cheek yep. cramp. Okay, oh, yeah, there you go. Nice pocket there, okay? Oh, my God. Did you just pull that out of my bone? So, that is where the blood goes. Yep. The centrifuge is literally going to spin that. The heavier molecules are going to float to the bottom, and the lighter molecules are going to float to the top. Since my baby left me, I found a new place to dwell. Hi. Hi. Hot dog, baby. That's what I'm talking baby. about. Ooh, the baby. That's where it really was good. At the end of the baby. 